The following session was recorded live in San Antonio, Texas for the 2003 Caller Lab Conference. This is tape number 25, Showmanship. Welcome. This is the uh, Showmanship session. Uh, my name is Tony Oxendine. I'll introduce the panel in just a second. Towards the end of the, uh, of the session, we will have time for uh, questions and answers. Since it's being taped, uh, we'll get you a microphone. Uh, we need you to say who you are, where you're from, and speak clearly in the microphone because we hate having real long blank spots on the tape. Uh, this is going to be, um, the showmanship panel is one that we offer every year at Color Lab, and, and we try to bring a variety of, of different types of showmen and show persons into it. Our first presenter this afternoon is from Soro. Denmark. Her name is Lona Bloom. She's been calling 10 years, and uh, she is the recent, as of yesterday, recipient of, of being one of the first certified square dance teachers. She took the test and passed it. Uh, she is a brand new Board of Governor member. She'll start office officially Wednesday, so she'll be our um, second non- uh, well, we have, we've had several Canadians across the water, board members. Uh, she's the past president of the Danish Area Callers and Teachers Association. She's a recording artist on Global Records. She's had several. <laughs> she is the current reigning Danish arm wrestling champion. And she's the former president of the RHMF Society, which is the Redheads Really Have More Fun. Would you please welcome Lona Bloom? Thank you. See, that is all true, almost. Coming from a little country, as I do, Denmark is a very little country. It is really easy to see that everything in the United States is bigger. Everything is bigger. Not only in Texas, but in the United States. And the yesterday, I discovered something really neat that you guys have here that we certainly do not have. You have drive-through stores. And I just said to Doug Bennett, that is really neat. Do you take your car and drive down the aisle and just grab whatever you want? And he said, no, 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 that's not how it works. I said, well, why do you call it drive-through? Because drive-through to me means you drive through. And he said, well, it's driving around. I said, well, then you should call it that. So it is really, now why do I say this? Well, because to me, showmanship is also language. And um, I am not a native English-speaking person. I do consider myself to be okay in English. At least I'm far better in English than I am in Chinese. But um, I have to get whatever I want my dancers to do. I have to, I have to make them understand what I want them to do. And um, I called a dance here recently, and I wanted them to motivate but I didn't say it like that. I said, Modi Wade. And they didn't move. And I thought, that's weird, because I was told they could do that. So I have said it a little louder, Modi Wade. And they still didn't say it. Sure, I have a problem with some words. I um, didn't make them cast three either, because I did not pronounce a T. I kind of said cast off or something like that. So I've been uh, working a lot on on my accent, trying to get rid of whatever I can get rid of. I still can't say one of my favorite songs I recorded on Global Record is called, when I say it, Crazy. And I believe it's called something else, isn't it? How do you say it? Crazy. See, it's a different song. <laughs> but I still like it. But anyway, it's, um, it is fun to watch how much difference we have, we have one common language, all of us, the square dance language. That is, that is what we have in common, if nothing else. We have different cultures. I can do stuff where I come from that I could get away with, which I could not get away with over here. And vice versa. Or is it vice versa? Vice versa. Vice versa. And um, I once had the pleasure of dancing to an American caller. And I was in a square with 
seven non-English speaking dancers. We had a lot of fun and suddenly he called all the hairy legged ones promenade. <coughs> <coughs> Guess who promenaded? <laughs> Cause I come from a country where we don't shave our legs. So sure I promenaded. And everybody else was standing there and said, what was that all about? So you really have to, to think if you go and call in a, la in, in a country where they do not have English as their primary language. Maybe you should watch out what you're asking for because you might get something you didn't want to get. We also have, um, I don't know the, the English word really, but I call it double meaning words. Um, for instance, there will be an American caller coming to Denmark, calling along, and at some point he will say, blah, 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 pick up a girl, blah, 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 you can let her down now. And um, the effect could very easily be the breakup of, of the square because they don't know what you can let her down is. And um, a lot of stuff like that. Even within, I guess, within the English slash American language, there are differences. I know that it would be okay to knock me up in the morning in England. Could be here too, but it would mean something else. <laughs> yeah? Shagging down the boulevard is two different things, whether you are one place or another. You need to, I, I'm sure Andrea from Australia has a lot, of, a lot of things she can do there and she can't do here also. Sign language, what I used to say. Do you all know, like, thumbs up and whatever. We have all kinds of things we can do with our fingers. Might mean something here, but it doesn't mean where I come from. Um, in Denmark, we can do like this. What would that mean to you? So, so, yeah. In Denmark, it means great. Uh huh. I can go just uh, down the road to a place in Holland where it means uh, bad. So, you really have to watch it. Um, I was trying, well, I was calling a dance once in Sweden, and I wanted to, to get eye contact with my friend, and I did like this, meaning, is, is the sound okay? And she did like this, and I thought, Ugh. now, what is that? So, we really have to, to be careful. It is very easy to offend people, and you don't, you don't want to offend them. Um, once, the first time I visited uh, uh, Marilyn and Doc in, in Global Hall, the dancers came in and said, Hi, hello, how are you? And, and I said, I'm fine, how are you? And they already walked on. And I, I couldn't figure that out. And, and I and asked them, Why do people ask me how are you if they don't want to hear my answer? And, uh, and I figured out it's just a way of saying hello. So, uh, so I got into the habit of saying, when they say, hey, how are you? I said, do you really want to know? <laughs> and, and they said, uh, yeah. <laughs> so it is, um, it is different. It really is different. Appearance is another thing. Um, I think maybe to dancers who do not, again, speak English very well. Appearance is uh, not as important as what we present, our choreo, our dance, our singing, whatever. Um, if you guys want to call a dance in Denmark and all dress up with fancy hats or big glasses or whatever, you might, you might see the dancers walk out on you, because that's not what they came for. They came to dance. To them, the showmanship is not how you look or how you jump around on the stage or do whatever you do, it is the choreo thing. I believe it is true for that in, in Germany too. Um, we are more choreo oriented than we are um, with jokes and stuff. I, I have no word for it really. That's just, yeah, tenumse would be a good word. Would you like to translate that? Okay. Okay, that is the only Danish word that Tony knows and he's very proud of it. And you would not want to know what it means. Showmanship to me is also what, how we interact with the dancers when we are not on stage. 
even when we are not calling a dance. If I go to a dance just to be a dancer, I am still on somehow. People realize, ah, there's a caller if they know me. If not, I'm in good shape. Uh, but I have to watch out what I do. How do I talk to people? How do I mingle? Is that a word? Mingle? Ming yeah. um, what about after the dance? What about before the dance? The president calls you, you answer the phone, you talk about whatever. Yeah, you sure you could say, is it part of showmanship? Well, to me it is. Um, he ne would never call me if I misbehaved at a dance and he saw me there. He would never call me because he already made up his mind he doesn't like me. So, be careful. Um, I had um, I had a little story, but I think I will wait with that till till later. Can I pass this on to Skip or? Okay. Thank you, Lona. <laughs> Lona, see, you worry too much about a lot of things because uh, being from the South and being here in Texas, I'm one of the few people that can understand Texas people because we do speak the King's English. <laughs> and after you hear this next gentleman talk, you'll know what I mean. Uh, Skip Brown will be our next presenter. He's from uh, Portland, Maine. Has been calling since 1976, and he learned to call or dance in Stuttgart, Germany. Beautiful area. He joined Call a Lab in 1983, and he's a member of the Mainstream Committee and the Program Policy Committee, and is the current chairman of the PLUS Committee. You guys are going to have some interest. Had an interesting meeting, didn't you? I didn't fight. Oh, I'm sorry. I get it. Uh, Skip is married. He has two daughters and four grandchildren. Uh, he's the founder and former member of the Flying Elvises. And he is the reigning Mr. Nude Maine. Would you please welcome Mr. Skip Brown? Mr. Nude Maine? He's right because he was the runner up. We're, we're in this one here, huh? Okay. I just want a little bit more trouble in there. Is that all right? Yes. We'll turn that back. Well, everybody's talking about language. I might as well talk about language, too. He made a big joke about speaking the King's English, and you'll see why, because the next guy is from Maine. I drove down here. Once you get out of Hilly, New England, and you get down into Texas, it's flat. You can see for three days in any direction. I was going along about 70 miles an hour, and there was a crossroad way down the road. I saw it. There was a stop sign, and I looked up here for 40 miles. There was nothing coming. I looked up here for 50 miles. There was nothing coming. Nothing coming the other way. So I just kind of slowed down and rolled through. And all of a sudden, I was seeing blue lights and flashing sirens. And noise. I got pulled over by a Texas state trooper. I walked up, and I rolled down the window. I said, what's wrong, officer? He said, didn't you all see that stop sign back there? I said, yes, sir, I did. He said, you didn't stop, did you? No, sir. But I slowed down with nothing coming. Get out of the car, boy. So I got out of the car. He wrapped one arm around my head. With the other arm, he took his nightstick and started whopping me in the head. He said, now I'm going to teach you language. Do you want me to slow down or stop? <laughs> I got a sign. I brought a sign all the way from Maine. See it? Put it in the frame and all that. It says, showmanship is the art of being a showman. Skill is a showman. So I went right to the book and looked up showman, showmanship, and it said, showman. And a showman is a person who makes a business of producing or managing shows. So you're a showman. You've produced and managed this show with your cast of characters here. Is that right? And it's also a person who is skilled at this or at presenting anything in an interesting or dramatic manner. Now, Tony alluded to me being the Flying Elvis. How many of you happened to see the uh, after-party show on Sunday evening? Okay, that was me in the Elvis suit. I fooled a lot of people. A lot of people that know me well did not realize that was me. I tried to do it in a dramatic fashion. I had volunteered to John Jones to do that because I've done it, to, so, done it with several of my uh, weekends back up in New England. And I said, the way I'd like to do it is I'll give you a mini-disc. If you want me to do a six-minute program, 
push one. If you want a nine-minute program, push two. Just push the button, and that's it. I didn't want to be coming in here and standing on the stage. Well, this is Skip Brown. He's going to imitate Elvis Presley because some of the magic is gone. Some of the drama is gone. So if you were in here, you just heard Elvis Presley's entrance music. Got everybody's attention. What is that? Because it sounded really, really loud. Drums, horns, and I burst into the door, and people had this image. Wow, it's Elvis. I fooled a lot. Dra drama. Nobody knew who I was. Whether I dance like Elvis doesn't make any difference. I don't think I did. I certainly don't sound like Elvis. I'm nowhere near his size, and I've got arthritis. I can't move like Elvis. I don't even try. I just use the music. I'm fortunate to have a wife that made me a lovely suit. My daughters bought me the wig and those sunglasses I couldn't see through, so if I kissed any men on the way in, I apologize, okay? <laughs> but that's what it is, being... Uh, being dramatic. That's why I'm dressed like this. I dress differently, deliberately, to make an impression. Not to try to show off that I can afford a coat with real buttons on it. I didn't do it for that. But just to present. And then uh, my buddy over here says, clothing isn't all that important, is it? Huh? So. <laughs> all right. So that's my idea of showmanship, is to do something that gets people's attention and makes them laugh or cry or whatever whatever you're trying to get out of them, all righty? And I'm going to be doing some other things later with some music, and maybe we can get a square and demonstrate some things that I do to my dancers or for my dancers or with my dancers, okay? And as Tony says, there'll be time for questions later, okay? And I will relinquish the microphone back to, uh, shall I? No, you don't want to, do you? Can I talk through your microphone once? It's big difference, you know. He, he's big star, right? Big showman. You talk through Tony's microphone, and you become great. See? See what a difference it makes? And all right. <laughs> if you could learn to speak well, you'd be okay. So we're gonna have we're gonna have both of them back. I don't know if you guys have noticed something. Did you notice that both? Both of these people started off their presentation. They needed to win the floor. And as a caller, you have one shot, you have one time to make a good first impression. And both of these people used what a lot of people use. They started off using humor. Skip got up and told a, a okay joke. <laughs> See, I know that didn't really happen because if you'd really, if a Texan had really stopped you with that accent, he'd have shot you. And if you were driving 70 miles an hour on a highway in Texas, somebody would run over you. And, and, and Lona start, interjected her entire presentation with humor. Now, Lona did something that, that is effective in this instance here for her because in a lot of ways she made fun of herself. And, and, we, laugh, and, and we were laughing with her. There are callers that can do that and make that very effective. Marshall Flippo is a great example of, uh, of that. Uh, Skip, on the other hand, came in and decided to tell a joke. I don't know that, that Lona, with, with the language barrier, would be able to tell an effective joke. The jokes that would be funny in Denmark may not be funny here. And, uh, but she was still able to interject, find something funny with American, with the drive through thing, that we could all relate to. So we both, everybody in here started off. We immediately liked both of them. So they have half the battle won already. No, you're not done yet. They have half the battle done already because we immediately like them. And, and that's, that's a big part of being a showman is to establish that rapport with the floor so that they like you immediately because then they will do things for you that they would not do if they did not like you. Uh, it, and there, there's a lot of psychological stuff that goes on between callers and dancers. And one of the things, if the dancers like you and trust you, they will do calls for you that they would not do for someone that they did not like or trust. So that's very important to learn. And with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Lona. Yes, you said you had something else. Yep, that's true. Um, I would like to talk about helper words, or the, the use of helper words, whether it be at a dance or at your regular club or whatever. To me, that is also part of the showman we try to be. Um, again, I would like to look at it from, from where I live and for, from where I call. Helper words can be very dangerous where, where we come from. Um, in the sense that um, 
if we call something and the dancers don't really maybe get it and we want to help them so we start queuing our way through it those dancers that already did the call will do it again exactly what happens always because they do not understand that we are act in essence only helping someone who's having a hard time um, another thing is that we might not understand all the helper words that we are given uh, there could be many 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 ways of trying to help our dancers but really we should try to stick to to the common language we have the square dance language and not use too many other words because a lot of us don't understand it and and even people who do speak English would uh, fall into the trap of doing doing the call again if they are in the position where they can do it again if, if Tony were to call whatever um, and then he, s he saw me in the square struggling he would try to help me so he might be a g nice guy for once and and cue his way through it and, and I said great and I'll do it again but so would all the others so so that is something we have to to watch out for and Tony mentioned what I really wanted to say that's the thing about jokes um, jokes are not accepted the same way all over the world um, we can have a skip tell a joke here and you will all crack up and I thought that's a great joke and I go back home and tell the same joke and they all go huh it's like and even in England they might not think it's very funny uh, the double meaning words again I have a very good friend in England and I'm sure he doesn't mind me mentioning his name his name is Paul Bristow he was uh, calling uh, a tip after a national somewhere or a convention whatever it was and he wanted to tell the difference between England and Australia he said this is so funny he said in Australia the water runs the wrong way down the sock hole and and that was the the word he used and he did not want to offend anybody that is just the word he is using and everybody was reacting just like you some was laughing and some were, did he just say sock hole and he did say that and uh, afterwards he said well what is it called over here and somebody said drain <laughs> and he said but it is a sock hole <laughs> but and he in in reality he did offend somebody and he didn't mean to and and um, it is just so easy the um, the culture differences we have could also um, well if I come here and call a dance I might think that the dancers don't like me because they all leave after the coffee and I maybe I'm used to the dancers sticking around for one till ten in the evening and not leaving till the very last tip and very often they want more and then I come here and call a dance and uh, a call is very nice to me and tell me hey it's it's not because of you but they'll leave after the cake and I say okay but if if he hadn't told me that I would have thought well I didn't do a very good job here did I and that is something that that uh, is nice to know when you when you get into a new area what is what are the habits also uh, if I were to call in Tony's area I would ask Tony do I have to do something do you do a grand march do I have to announce the callers on the floor or whatever Tony came over to my place and tried starting announcing the callers on the floor everybody would look up at him and say call man that's we're here to dance we don't do all these announcements like you do over here I'm not saying that is wrong I'm just saying it's different and, and we need to be aware of all the, the differences that are that exist even within the same country my my country is as I just said a very small little country I can drive from one end to the other end in five hours and uh, even within my country there are differences um, where I come from in my club we don't want to dance after nine o'clock because we have been dancing since one so we leave at, at nine even if the dance goes on till eleven we still leave half of us we have been dancing enough we have no breaks we just dance and let me add we do not have any rounds either so we dance a lot and we don't want to dance after nine o'clock 
If I cross the bridge and go four hours up, it's a different ball game. They do not leave, and they go on till 12 in the evening. And if I want to, if I want to stop calling, or if I if I set up the dance and I say, well, oh, nine o'clock will be fine, they will call me and say, no, it's not fine. You go on till midnight. I say, I, I do what? I said, yep, you go on till midnight. And then at the in the middle of the dance, they come up, tell me, you stop calling now. I said, okay, I stopped calling, and because now they decided they wanted a break. It's not up to me. They decide that, and they will not tell me in advance. I might have a break, I might not have one. And that's just how it works. But you really took the joke thing out of me, so um, am I passing this on to Skip, or back to you? Um, I kind of like to be the intermediary. That way, uh, speaking the King's English, as I do. <laughs> uh, one of the things she said, because going going overseas now is becoming increasingly more popular a lot of american callers are are going to different parts of europe and and to japan and and all over and and she said something that was very important one of our methods of of calling now and i'm not saying it's good or a bad thing uh is we've gotten very 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 into directional calling uh i don't think it personally leads to good dancing that's just me uh but but she has a very good point if you go to a foreign country and you start giving directional calls, oftentimes these people, the only English they speak is square dance. And so they understand, girls, you turn back, but they don't have a clue what you say when you say, girls, turn around. So one has to be very, very careful. I'm getting ready to go to uh, Japan in, in a few months, and I'm going with some friends of mine, and one of the guys that I'm going with is a very, he's an excellent caller. I, I, I love watching him work. He's a technician. He does nothing but directional calls. And I know that that the Japanese in this area, I was just there a few months ago, I know that the, very few of these people speak English. And and I'm, I'm concerned because I think he's going to have a, I think he's a great caller, and, and I'm worried that, that he may very well get hammered over there because the people want to understand him. So one has to be very, very careful about that. And she was also right on jokes. Uh, it's very appropriate as a speaker to start off with a joke, or if you're in your home area, start off with a joke. But be very careful if you're in a different culture, because she said something about slang words, things that we don't think offend, oftentimes in a different country will be offensive. Uh, it's happened to me, it's happened to my friends. So one has to be very, very careful, because some of you guys are, are going or plan on going maybe overseas somewhere, and uh, you have to be very careful when, you, when you're in these different cultures. With that, I'll turn it back over to Skip. Well, I think I've pretty much done all the talking that I came prepared to talk. Uh, I'd like to show you some of the things that I do to, for, and with my dancers to uh, make them enjoy themselves a little bit more. Some of them are very, very basic. Some of them are kind of dumb, but they're all well-received usually. All right, I'm going to put on some music. Could we have a volunteer square? Is that all loud? Oh, yeah, this seems to work all right here. Okay. You can all hear the music all right? And you can hear me as well? All right. I do one-night stands, and I teach classes, and I call up through the PLUS program and a little bit of advanced. But... Uh, Let's just look at some of the things that I might do with a uh, one-night stand, which would include all kinds of people, and in particular, children in school. I go to a school and have the uh, fifth graders every year for just two days, and uh, they have a ball. So we've already done our grand march and our partner pairing, and we've got everybody home and squared up, and they're all ready to go, and they know everything I'm going to call. Bow to the partner. Turn around and bow to the corner. Join hands. Circle to the left. Go all the way around. I got them dancing to the music. They're all happy. When you get back home, all the heads walk to the middle and come on back. Side pair, same thing. Everybody face your corner. Bow to the corner. Turn around and face your corner. 
your partner. I'm going to show you one more new thing now. This is called a do side do. In French, it means back to back. There's no hands, there's no touching. And what we're going to do when I say go is everybody's going to take one step left and one step forward. Then you're going to be standing right shoulder to right shoulder, right? Very good. That's all right. The, the, the children do the same thing. I'm used to it. <laughs> then you're going to step forward and step to the right, so you're standing back to back. Are you standing back to back? Bend over a little. Give a little push. Make sure there's somebody there. All right. All right. Now take a step to the right and back up so you're left shoulder to left shoulder. Then back up and step left so you're nose to nose. Eight beats of music, eight steps, that's a do-side-do. All by yourselves without the music, do a do-side-do. Right shoulders, back to back, left shoulders, nose to nose. Now we'll dance a little bit. Join hands, circle to the left. we got to get their feet to the music again. These are little children. you got to make them real happy. All the way to, I don't call C3, there comes, sorry. Head couples walk to the middle and they come on back. Side pair go forward, come on back. All face the partner, do a do sa do, it's back to back. Very good. Square your set, face it, hold your partner's in. Now I've had these children out here for probably 30, 35 minutes and they reasonably trust me. I've been a little bit humorous so they've got a little, little grin. So I tell them the big secret about square dancing. Now, you're going to find this out eventually. You might as well find out now. And I get a little somber and everything. Turn to face your corner. In square dancing, I tell them, corners are notoriously stupid. And you all snickered in here. And they're all smart. Teachers raise their eyebrows. What is he doing? Now, what I want you to do is take your corner by both hands. Repeat after me. I'm sorry you're stupid. I'm going to help you learn the do-side do. Now let go of your corner, and with your corner, remembering your corner is stupid, do a perfect do side do Right shoulders, back to back, left shoulders, nose to nose. Take your corner by both hands. Say, I'm, I'm glad you're not stupid anymore. And then you put the music back on again. Join hands and circle to the left. Go once around till you get back home. Everybody in that square is smiling, all right? I might have offended some folks out there. I hope not. But if I did, I apologize. But I didn't. the children really love that. They really do, because they get to tell somebody they're stupid because an adult told them they could do it and it was all right. Okay? When I'm playing with the mainstream program, I just, little odd things. Head pair, square through, go four. You're now out of the fifth grade. You're back up in seniors in high school. Do a do sa do all the way around. Make an ocean wave. And the ladies trade twice just because you look so nice. Then swing through. Boy, run around a girl. Bend the line, rock up to the middle in a back way out. Just the boys on tiptoe walk straight across. Swing her. I'm as surprised as you are. Promenade home. All the way till you get back home. Oh, yeah, you gotta trust your collar, okay? Yes, indeed. Side fails to the same thing. Square through, go four. See if it feels the same way that way. Alrighty? What do you think? Do a do sa do, make an ocean wave, and the ladies trade again because I had you do it. Do it again, trade twice, swing through. Boy, run around a girl, bend the line, rock up to the middle and the back, way out. Just the boys sneak across, swing her. Boys are having fun with it, aren't they? Yes. Go all the way around that ring, very good, and when you're there, the girls might want to do that. So I have the head pair touch a quarter to save time. Boy, run around the girl. Everybody do the right and the left through. Here to the left. Bend the line. Walk to the middle and come on back. Just the boys walking in because I forgot I was going to have the girls do it. Swing this girl short promenade two steps. This is showmanship, not perfection. So back off a little bit, all right? I made a mistake. You chalking that down? You wrote it down. Okay, thank you. Side pair, touch a quarter. Boy, run around the girl. Everybody star through. Then past the ocean. Swing through. All the boys run around the girls. Bend the line rock up to the middle in the back way out. All the boys down on one knee. Beg that girl to come over and pick you up and swing. Beg. Promenade home. <laughs> Promenade. <laughs> You 
have to be careful with your crowd because sometimes the guys get down and they can't get back up. All right. <laughs> all right. One more teeny weeny one just play. Head pairs, promenade halfway. Just for something different. It's the square through in the middle and a count to four. Everybody square through three. All trade by. Everybody past the ocean. You do a linear cycle. Hinge, pull, pass, and peel. Bow to the corner. Turn around and bow to the partner, too. I think that's enough of that stuff. But I, it's all kinds of little things you can do like that. I sometimes, I, I did the uh, Elvis Presley act. I, I don't imitate Elvis Presley. I use his music. In singing call, sometimes I'll pretend that I'm Martin and Lewis or the Rat Pack or Satchmo, but I don't tell the people what Satchmo, oh, Louis Armstrong, you know Louis, played a horn, New Orleans, all right. Oh, yeah, that's coming. That's coming. I imitate Roy Rogers. Trigger's in there, but my best one is Dale Evans. I can do day 11s. Let's play with this one. Again, when I do all these things, I, I don't do it cold. You go in and you call your dancer, you do your workshop and everything, and, and you make sure the dancers, like Tony said earlier, like you. Okay? He can come to my area, Tony can come to my area, probably a lot of you guys can, and do things, bang, and get away with it. Things that I couldn't do unless I worked three days or four hours are called a heck of a dance but because he's who he is he can come and do things the local kid can't get away with so if you're going to do things like that from my point of view is get the audience to like you get the dancers to like you and trust you and root for you and what's he going to do next i don't know let's see i don't want to do this one i want to do no, I have to do that one because the other one's in Maine. <laughs> Dean Martin and uh, Jerry Lewis, okay? Circle to the left, okay? Elemental. Do, sa, do, and promenade. Dean, can I call one? Dean, Dean, can I call one? Okay, Jerry. Side space, grand square. Can you help me, please? Sing something nice. Okay. Head pair, square through four. Swing through. Boy, run around a girl. Ferris wheel. In the middle, gonna veer to the left. Then veer to the right, and everybody veer to the right. Everybody gonna veer to the left. You turn back and swing. Swing with a girl in front. Who's coming in? Rickles is here. Don Rickles. Can Don call one? Sure. I already. All the hockey pucks square through. That's you heads. Come on, move it. When you get to the side, you'll know they're ugly and buck to. Do side do. Swing through. Dumb ones run. Come on, guys. I'm talking about you. Do a Ferris wheel. In the middle, get a right and a left through. Square through. Three. One. Two. Three, swing her, she's smarter than you, and call her the very first thing every morning and the last thing every night. Four ladies chain, I guess, what, three quarters? Then chain straight across, does that get you back? Get back where you <laughs> oh, I'm having fun. I also have a tune called Basin Street Blues. I really love Dixon. I like the music, and the people know that I like the music, and I get fooling around with it. The last break and the last figure, I do my best to growl like Satchmo, but I don't get out there and tell the people I'm going to do it, and I don't show my handkerchief. If you're going to use a handkerchief like Satchmo, just make sure it's new, clean, unused. As my wife let me know after I did it one time with one 
that I had the flu. Is this one clean? I just have it there. I don't, know if I'll go through, I don't think I'll go through this whole thing for you. You don't want to do the whole thing, do you? No. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Victor. <laughs> You're going to talk about the music. Doesn't it make you want to sway a little bit? Side space, grand square. Won't you come along go with me? Way down the Mississippi. We'll take a boat to the land of dreams. Float down the river, Alaman left, weave the ring. Well, the band's there to greet us. Swing and promenade now. Wear all the light, and you hit on light because it's going to come in later on, all right? And you do a simple thing, you hit there, square through, go four. And so the dancers will know what's coming, and you make it very easy. Swing through. Talk. And you're talking about the horn. Do the right and the left through. Slide through. Square through, go three. Start getting into the music a little bit. Alamant left. Swing with the honey. Then promenade her on home. Take your lady down the river to New Orleans. Heads again. Square through four. I'm going to do a lot more. Louie playing that horn in the background. Can you hear it? Swing through. Boy, run around the girl. Do a Ferris wheel. In the middle, do a no side do. Then pass through. Everybody do a half do side do. Then an element left. Swing with the next and promenade. Take that lady. You've been talking about the music. You've been giving the halfway decent, nice, smooth, easy fig, and have to think hard. Side space, grand square, won't you come along with me? Way down the Mississippi. We'll take a boat to the land of dreams. Float down the river, Alamant left, weave the ring. Well, the band's there to greet us. Lots of old folks to meet us, swing and promenade now. Where all the light and the dark folk meet. Steam, now you want to really get into it and swing it, okay? Side pair, square three. You get me four. Del Sado, the corner, back to back. Swing through. Don't stop, spin your top. Will the boy walk up the right and left through? Turn the girl and square through, you go three. The corner swing, swing with corner promenade. I sing, take that lady. Now, hey, Louie, you want some of the... Yeah, daddy, I do, yeah. Side space, grand square. Won't you come along with me? Way down the Mississippi. I'm not growling as good as I usually do. We'll take a boat to the land of dreams. Struck down the river, down the Alamant left and we Well, the band's there to greet us. Lots of old folks to greet us. Swing and promenade now. Where all you white and us dark folk meet. Wave the handy. Way down the river, down a basin. Side there, square through like that white boy told you to do. Do the do side do and I make an ocean wave, don't get seasick. Swing through. Play in a toy box, spin the top. Will the brother walk up the right and left through the turn? Square through three. Be sure it's green. Swing that sister. Keep the girl in promenade. Hug me. Take that lady. Down the river to the chain the sisters over and back. Yes, indeed, is what you do. Way down the river, way down the river, you bend the New Orleans. Nighty. <laughs> Thank you. I think I'll. Oh, you guys can rest. Well, nice job. Um. If I may, let me dissect his his uh, his presentation because there were a couple things that I, I want you to, to know. If any of you guys ever go to New England, uh, if I were to ask you guys what's what is comfortable, what is comfortable tempo of dancing? 
That's comfortable. 128, 126, 124. Okay, comfortable dancing years ago, 20 years ago, was about 132. Uh, now, most of it, most of it has been my experience that most areas, comfortable dancing is somewhere on the high end of 126 and the low end of 132, depending on the rhythm. Well, you're, you're 20 years older. Uh, but depending on the rhythm uh, of, of the tune, uh, some 4-4 four, four rhythms are going to dance a lot faster than, than a 2-4 tune. New England is an area where typically the dance tempo, now that felt comfortable for you guys, yes? You were dancing at slightly less than 120. Yeah, but it, it, would, it would be irrelevant. The, that particular tune, you were dancing at less than 120 and it felt good. Typically, New, if, if I go to New England, I, t I have to slow my tempo down from what I would normally call, because these guys are accustomed to dancing at a slower tempo. Not that they're necessarily older, but that's the area. Some areas dance faster. Some areas are more comfortable. You come into the southeast, if you come to South Carolina, you can go 130. You, uh, most records, you can feel comfortable 130, 132 range, uh, because that's the, that's the tempo we normally dance. 20 years ago, we were dancing about 134. Uh, but that was a very, very effective presentation tool, and, and I want you to know that, that that you were dancing at a probably at a slower tempo than most of you are, are used to dancing, but it felt good. Uh, that's that, that's really important. I, I, I like that. Um, the the Dean Martin Jerry Lewis thing. I, I have of uh, every showmanship thing I've ever. I've never seen anybody do Dean Dean Martin or Jerry Lewis. I thought that was really kind of neat. I was just noticing something. We put his record down. You guys would be smart to do this. I only know a few people. I know Al Stevens says this. On this record, he's got labeled the last time, the time he did the tune. Not only that, but he's got the club that he did it in. So that he doesn't go back and they hear the same old thing, they hear the same dance he did last time. He knows that uh, on May 19th, he did this, that singing call somewhere. So that if he has, he's fired back to that same club in three months, he can look at this record and say, well, I better not do this one because I just did it three months ago. Uh, you got to be real careful that if we're going to do our, our stick, our showmanship stuff, a little bit of it, it, oftentimes, a little bit of it goes a long way, especially at a club level. You know, your club is not going to expect you. I'm sure that he doesn't get up every week and do Satchmo. Uh, he may have another, another deal. So be careful we don't overshow you. Many callers, uh, I hear a complaint about, oftentimes, about many callers because they're too gimmicky. And, and you come to their dance and it's nothing but smoke and mirrors. You know, and, and it's everything is the whole dance is is a it's that dancers want a little bit of meat and that's fine to give them ice cream this is ice cream this is the dessert and it's fine to give the dancers dessert but the dancers also want a little meat and potatoes in there and it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be exotic meat and potatoes you don't need to be uh, the choreographer that some people are as long as you give them quality dancing that that's the important part um, but when, when Skip got up, he was prepared for this. He knew where the trouble parts were, and he also knew what was going to be effective. He knew that when he told those boys to tiptoe across, that they were actually going to do it, and they were going to laugh. He knew that, and not only that, he allowed extra time in the figure for them to be able to finish and get home. That's important. If you try to do a regular 64-beat figure and try to do something like that, they're not going to have time to get the promenade because they've got to get over the laughter and the, and the tippy-toe. Uh, when he did the boys on your knees thing, I, I thought that was just, I thought that was perfect. But he's right now. A lot of our people we work with now, you may have to give them another 64 beats to get up. Uh, but but that was just that was just a, a tremendous sale on that record. Um, I would I would as a dancer, I would get such a kick out of dancing that record. Uh, would it go over in Denmark? No, because these people wouldn't have a clue who Jerry Lewis, Dean Martin, or Satchmo. Uh, they would not understand boys tiptoe across, nor would a lot of them understand boys get on your knees. So showmanship things that are effective here may not be effective in Denmark. Showmanship things that are effective in New England may not be effective in California. For those, those of us that travel around a lot, you, you find out that you have to alter your calling style and alter your things in different areas. There are, there are jokes that work in one area that won't work in another. So one has to be very, very careful. Um, you, you, you did when you did the, the Satchmo thing, and and you did the, the 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 four white boys come in and do this. There are areas that you couldn't do that. Now, 
there, in New England, you can do that almost anywhere you wanted to go, and, and it's funny. But we have to be careful where we put the things because we can very easily, either people not understand us, uh, or they, we, we make them mad, or they don't get it. The whole, this, whole, this whole thing he did would have been a, a waste of four minutes of your life if you didn't get it. If I didn't know who Satchmo was, and it was, I, I actually do, I mean, I, I remember Ed Sullivan, but if I didn't know who Satchmo was, I just remember he was on Ed Sullivan, I remember that. Uh, if I didn't know who Satchmo was, that whole sale wouldn't have been effective. I wouldn't have understood the handkerchief. I wouldn't have un understood anything. Our present-day market, fortunately, remembers Satchmo. A lot of them remember Moses. So you got to be careful. <laughs> um, he did another thing, too. He, he did a little choreographic twist that I'm sure the dancers caught. I don't know if you caught, because he did a linear cycle from a tidal wave, which is a different way of doing linear cycle. But now, the trick to that is, is he did the linear cycle from the tidal wave. He didn't call anything after it. He won because at the very end he said, there's your corner swing. So even if they'd have missed the linear cycle, they could have still found their corner and swing, and they'd have thought they did the call right, which is all we care about in something like that. We just want them to come out right at the end and be happy. Because showmanship, a lot of showmanship, like I say, is the ice cream, is the dessert of, of, your, of your evening. And, and people need dessert. Now, you don't want to give them an entire evening of ice cream. Because then you go home and you're bloated and you don't feel good. But a little bit of ice cream, and, and I would rather have a little bit of ice cream at just maybe a spoonful at, at 7.30, and maybe another little spoonful at 7.45, and on, rather than have a half gallon at, at 11 o'clock at night. So we've got to be careful. Um, something that, that has not, I'm a moderator, I'm not supposed to talk, but we're, we have plenty of time. I want to address one thing that I think is an important part of showmanship, and I, and I would like to see us perhaps use it some, because I've, I've watched some things here this weekend, and, and I've kind of, it's kind of worried me a little bit. Um, one of the things that we sell is music. We have two parts of our show. One part is our voice, the other part is the music. Uh, we often lose, and, and Skip did a, an effective job of selling the music, we often lose a, a large part of our, of our show by not b showing our music effectively. That being said, one of the complaints that we have is that we're always, we need to get younger dancers. We want to get more people and younger folks in the activity. I would like to bring this up for your consideration and perhaps to other record producers as well. I am of the belief that if we're going to get today's boomers, to the people who want to get the younger people, we are not going to get them with fiddles and banjos totally. I don't know of anybody that goes down the road listening to Turkey in the Straw. Uh, I surely don't, don't know that, that kids, if we want to get kids, they sure ain't going to listen to Turkey in the Straw. I think we need to, our music, I think, needs to reflect our times a little more. Uh, too often we get stuck in the past. And, and uh, I would like to see, I'm trying to, and, 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 and I'm getting a, a very, very positive reaction to my choice in music. They, they, um, Chris, uh, you guys had the, the digital session, and in and, and times past we've had the alternative music session that you guys have been part of. Okay, uh, and, and that is, if you, if, I recommend that you come to it. Uh, you will get some ideas. Dancers do not need fiddles and banjos in order to dance. I'm not saying don't use fiddles and banjos. I'm saying don't use a whole evening of fiddles and banjos. All dancers need to dance is the proper rhythm and the proper beat and the proper tempo. The music is, is smoke and mirrors. That's, that doesn't matter as much as the dancers need the proper place to tell them to put their foot. What goes on else around them? Am I telling you not to use mountain music or mountain dew? No, it, because there are people that like that. But, but open yourself up that there are people that would like to listen to maybe and hear, hear an Alabama song. Do I think you should do Led Zeppelin? Probably not. Uh, you know, I'm not going to do Led Zeppelin, but chances are I'm not going to do Patsy Cline either. Uh, there, there, there's, there's middle ground that we all can meet on, and it's a great. Our music is a great showmanship tool, and 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 I think we've here here recently in the last 10 years, 15 years maybe, we have gotten to the point, and and it's true in Denmark, although they they do dance very smoothly and they dance the music, but we've gotten to the point that we we treat our choreography ahead of everything else, 
and and consequently we have lost part of the dance when we when we rely strictly on choreography in order to entertain our dancers the dancers need some nice music music is is is, is what builds you up uh, proper music you 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 can be you can be a mediocre caller and you great music and, and have some good dances now you can be a great caller and have mediocre music and still do a good dance uh, but if you don't feel that you're the choreographer that that uh, Vic Cedar might be, then offset that and use some good music. Uh, there are there is just tons of good music. We're very fortunate right now in this in this day and age. I think we have the best square dance music in in 2003 and t than we've ever had. Uh, you listen at the tape service, and there are just there is just a ton of really good music. Now there's a ton of really bad music. There's a ton of things that I wouldn't do on a bet, but but there is just an awful lot of really good danceable music. A lot of different flavors. There's Latin flavors and country flavors and Western flavors, and and all these things that we need to integrate into our dance. Uh, and and each when you use a different type of music, it gives the tip a different feel. Uh, many dancers say that we callers are boring. Uh, oftentimes. Uh, it's not that we're boring as much as that we're doing the same thing. The dancers hear the same singing calls and the same pattern records every week. Uh, I know records are expensive. Uh, go back in your case. Find some other stuff. Use different music. Find some different things. I just discovered just uh, recently most of our music is 2-4 rhythm. Does everybody understand 2-4 rhythm? Boom, chuck, boom, chuck, boom, chuck. Um, his first record he did, the pattern record that he did, was, was not 2-4 rhythm. This is 4-4 four, four rhythm. There's no chuck. There's boom, but there's no chuck. But, now, and that, and I'll give you a hint, 4-4 four, four rhythm, you can't, most times you're going to have to slow down because it dances fast. 4-4 four, four rhythm is a rock and roll rhythm. Uh, but his, his second choice, his second choice was this. makes it feel totally different. Most of the stuff that we do, I'm glad you brought records. I won't be able to demonstrate this. Most most of the music we do has what is this? Two four four four. Tell me. It's not very big. It's a roll of records. It's an excellent tune. That's four four rhythm. It's boom 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 boom. It gives the dance a a, 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 a particular flavor. Um, 2-4 music gives the dance a different flavor. I just discovered, uh, just recently, I started doing a song that has a 6-8 rhythm, which is a, a march rhythm. And the dancers love it. Now, the thing is, is as I come over here and profess that we need to start updating our music and do blah, 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 the record I picked is, is 30 years old. It's called Who's Your Lady Friend on Hi-Hat. And, and the date on the record is, is 1973, but it's a 6-8 rhythm. And the dancers haven't heard that kind of rhythm in a long time. The only tune I've heard recently that had that rhythm was um, on rhythm. Uh, rhythm of my heart. On rhythm. Had a 6-8 rhythm. The dancers love that. It gives the whole dance a different feel. And, and that's what showmanship is about. It's feel. Showmanship is the art form of calling. That's the art part. It's not the technical part. Showmanship is not very technical. Showmanship is a feel. Uh, uh, who's the guy with the circus? Um, not the... Uh, Every, no, a, bar, the guy a sucker's born every minute. P.T. Barnum, he's the guy that said that said uh, a, a showman is the art of uh, a showmanship is the art of of making something difficult appear easy. And that that is what we do. We want to take the dancers and 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 make them think our way of thinking. We want to fool them. Skip told them before the song ever started, you're going to like this song because I like it because it's jazz. And automatically, when he put this tune on, I watched you. I, I, want, I, I was very careful to watch the folks because I was in here snapping my fingers. And I was watching people. I was watching you guys. You know, you guys were saying. You know, you were feeling. Now, there's, there's a big chance that had he not told you at the beginning that this was good music and you should listen for it, you wouldn't have heard that and wouldn't have felt it. But now you're aware of it. He used showmanship to sell that. That whole, this whole, this whole thing was smoke and mirrors. He sold the whole thing. Because really now, the content of the, the material was normal. Swing through, boy run, Ferris wheel, 
pass through swing and promenade. You know, I mean, but the music was wonderful. The presentation was great. You know, there's Skip has put a lot of time in on this tune. I, I can guarantee, I know, although I've never seen him do it, I can guarantee you that he's put in an awful lot of time on that tune. And that's what it takes. We need to put time into most anything we do. Uh, if you think that, that getting ready to call for your club every week means putting your equipment in the back of your car and going out and calling, and then coming back and not picking your records up again until next Tuesday when it's time to do the club again, you are never, ever, ever going to be as good as you possibly can be. These successful callers in the business are the, are the callers that work at their craft. Uh, you talk to some of the guys that, that, that work. I'm amazed at, at, at some of the guys that work, and girls, that work the real high levels because they will, they will prepare for hours and hours and hours for a dance. Moving checkers and, and, and using Vic's computer program and, and but praying, praying for hours just to call one dance. Would you guys spend hours to call, would you guys spend six hours to call two? Most callers would not. That's dedication. You know, we're not under the same, we're not under the same stress that some other callers are because, the, you know, our dancers, frankly, don't expect as much out of us. I think they should. We deserve to give those dancers 110% of ourselves every time we pick up the microphone, whether it's one square or whether it's 100. I had a situation a few weeks ago. Uh, I did a dance, and, uh, and it was a very small dance. And when I say small, I mean it was small. We had a weekend, Friday, Saturday, with workshops and the whole thing, and we had three squares. There was a caller that said, well, I got a buddy getting married Saturday. I think I'm going to go down Saturday afternoon and, and go watch him get married. I'm, I'm going to be in his wedding. And, uh, you know, he went. And after he came back, I said, you know, I just believe if we had 50 squares here instead of three, you wouldn't have left. And I know that he wouldn't have. We owe it to each end of, you know, some of you people, I was talking to some friends the other night, last night, in fact, and we were talking about lessons. And I said, do you, do you have any idea how many guys in, in, the, in, the, in the United States right now are teaching lessons to two squares? I mean, to two couples. You know, there are a ton of callers that are teaching to two couples. I admire the dedication these guys have. That, that is dedication. And those two couples, this caller, if he's going to do it, he owes these people the same 110% he would give if there was 20 couples or 50 couples. That... That is not only showmanship, it's professionalism. And showmanship and professionalism kind of go hand in hand a lot. So preparation is the key. Um, there's a lot of little, little the fine little technicalities of showmanship, yes. You should, be, you should be aware that you dress a particular way, that you stand on the stage a particular way. I think, I think there should be particular places that the, I would never ever call, if I could avoid it, I would never do a dance with this setup with the table in front of me because the dancers need to be able to see you. You know, I like, I like to call, I'm, I like to, I call left-handed. Although I'm right-handed, I call with the amp on my left side. That's where I'm most comfortable. Uh, so that's where I like to put the, the table here. Now the dancers can see me. I also have um, my microphone I got special from, from Dick Henschel at Hilton. I have like a 20-foot cord because I like to work way over here because these people need to see me call and I like to work way over here because these people need to see me call and I, I need a microphone that allows me to work the whole stage I feel very I feel very uncomfortable if I have a real small stage I love a big stage to allow me to go because people need to see you there are a lot of dancers that come they like to dance to you but they also like to see you uh, think of when you started dancing when you first started dancing and Ken Bauer came into town now, that was a big deal. Not only did you want to hear this man call, but you wanted to see this white-haired, handsome, good-looking, you know. I mean, but you wanted to see him. Believe it or not, believe it or not, there are many dancers that feel that way about you. If you come into town, if, if you're doing a special dance it, in your next city, there are people come out, they actually want to see you. It's a big deal to shake these guys' hands in off places. So we need to dress the part. We need to act the part. I don't think we should act snobby, uh, but we need to stand up and call straight up. We need to stand straight and erect. Never, ever turn your back on the floor. I don't care if it is your best side. Um, minor things. 
uh, there are a lot, a lot of technical things. Actually, where you put where you put the the speaker, you know, um, I don't like working with the speaker way over here because I like to hear it. I'm, I'm I'm getting old. I've been calling for 30 years, and and I'm I'm almost deaf from having the speaker. But I like having the speaker real close to me so that I can work. If if I'm in a hall that that the speakers have to be arranged a particular way, and I can't have one, but I I put one here, or I bring these others in close so that I can hear. I need to hear what the people hear. I don't like a monitor speaker because that's not what the people hear. Um, but but be aware there's there's all kinds of things. Don't don't come in with 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 men. I hate to see guys call with their hand in their pocket. And the reason I, the reason I do is because that gives the impression that you don't care. You're bored. Be excited. If you want the dancers to be excited and you're using exciting music, you be excited. And that'll generate excitement, and and that's what we want to do. See, we want to build an enthusiasm level in our dance, regardless of the level that you're calling, whether it's a one night stand or, or C6. It doesn't matter. We want to build an enthusiasm. These peaks and valleys when we do our programming that 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 you probably had sessions on forever. That's very very important. That is a huge part of showmanship. Um, there are past tapes that you can get. Color Lab's working on a best of the best series, and and uh, that you can hear all the little subtle nuances from from all the different callers that have presented this thing over the years. Um, read about it, study it, study your craft. We are all of us, whether we call full time, 300 nights a week, or whether we call once a month, or whether we call no matter what level we call or whether we only call one night stands whether we no matter what no matter what we are artists we we create we create a picture each night and if you paint by the numbers you're going to be a boring painter if you prepare if you prepare and you're able to freehand like John Jones did the other night, he'd never painted before in his life, and, and he sold somebody a saw for $50, and he drew a picture. But the picture looked, I'd never seen John draw, but it was beautiful. You know, and it was sold for $50. You know, that's artistic. John didn't know he was artistic. Probably. I sure as hell didn't. But we, we, need, to, we need to paint outside of the lines. Painting inside of the lines is boring. You know, our creativity, that's what sets us apart from the dancers, is our creativity, be it choreographic creativity or musical creativity. If you're talented in one area, concentrate it. Concentrate on that, work on the other. You know, uh, find your weak points and try to improve on them. Take your, take your good points and shine. If you're a good singer, find records that let you sing. If you can't sing real good, I'm not knocking you on this one, but if you can't sing real good, find, find records like this that have such great music that it doesn't matter whether you sing or not, and the folks will love you. I stretched long enough. I did. With that, we're prepared to entertain any questions or comments that you may have. Before we do that, what about a nice hand for Lona and Skip? If you have questions, see if this thing is working. One, one. On the, oh, I got this one. Both of them say on. One. We have a mic here that works. Uh, if you have a question, step up here to this mic, unless we can get... It might help if I cut this thing on. Yeah, cut that one that says volume. One, two. Ladies and gentlemen, I am a professional. Do not attempt this at home. One, two, yeah, this is better. Now, if we have a question, I'll be happy, and you can address your question to any of the panelists. I'll be happy to bring the microphone down there, and you can talk. Please say your name, where you're from, so we can have that on the tape, and you'll be famous. And if you, I found that if you say your name and address on the tape, you'll go out and buy this tape. Uh, tapes are on sale in the back. Uh, <laughs> tapes International from Miami have been here for years. And uh, anyway, and also, you guys may not know, but this year we can also get tapes on CD and MP3. So that's, that's kind of neat. They're finally getting into the 21st century. Questions? Comments? Now, we, we've been talking in here for 
for an hour and ten minutes. Now, surely somebody's got a question on something, or we didn't say anything profound enough. Yes, sir. Hold on. You're like, what's the guy? Not Mike Douglas. Phil. Lon Farrell from California. I just wanted to comment on uh, on Lone It Bloom and the his song she did crazy. You any idea how long and hard I worked trying to make that sound like you in Danish? <laughs> Lona's, Lona's, Lona's English is a lot better than my Danish, I can tell you that. Those of you guys who have never had the opportunity to go to Denmark and call, uh, it is a caller's dream. Uh, and when she said they dance from 1 until 9 with no breaks, it's true. They, all they do is switch partners. And, and they go and, and the average age is about 30 years younger than us and uh, it is just wonderful uh, they can dance generally anything you want to call within reason um, it's really really fun and, and the people the country's beautiful uh, the women are, are okay <laughs> you know well, I mean you know okay if you like tall blonde women blue eyed voluptuous if you like that they're, they're you know and girls, the guys are tall and blonde and slim, and even the callers, I hate them. <laughs> ah. This is Dave Sutter from Iowa. All right, Jerry, induce me. Uh, you gave us a few pointers on a few things not to do. I was wondering if you had any more of things that you don't like to see up on the stage. There's a lot of things. I, I, see, I see callers all the time make a lot of mistakes. The biggest mistake I see callers make is the very first thing they do. Uh, Lona was speaking, uh, was talking in terms of, of having, a, having an accent and being difficult to understand. I have a southern accent. Southern accents that are amplified are very, very difficult to understand. So one of the first things I try to teach on showmanship is how to use a microphone. And I find that most of us use a microphone incorrectly. Because we're, you, like a lot of the same, a lot of the dancers, a lot of the other things, we're still living 30 years ago, and we remember seeing Dick Jones' picture in American Square Dance, and he's got the microphone right here. And he's talking. Years ago, microphones were designed to be spoken across. The microphones that we, most of us are using now, the Estatics and Electro Voices, the 767s, 457s, uh, are omnidirectional microphones. They only work straight ahead. The only way to be effective in it is to talk directly into the microphone. Listen at the difference. If people don't, and, and when I, when I, if, if, if people can't hear me well, if I've got an accent or, or, or something, and, and I'm in New England where they speak this strange language, they have to be able to understand me. I need to do everything. Listen at the difference in my voice, just with the placement of the microphone. If how many of you call like this? It's it's easy to do because you don't have to worry about where to put the microphone. You move your head, and the microphone never goes anywhere, which is good. Okay, so you no, know, no, y'all afraid to raise your hand. I know most of you do. It's okay. Listen at the difference without changing anything. When I take the microphone and move it from here, and I move it right in front of my voice, right in front of my lips, can you hear the difference in the timbre of my voice? Notice that it got fuller, and it got more distinct. I didn't, uh, there, there wasn't the sibilance or the S's that you get here when you s speak across the top of it. That's the first thing I would try, uh, that, to me that is the basic, one of the first things you have to be able to do is be hear, heard and understood. So that would be the first thing I would address showmanship by. You don't see Garth Brooks, Wayne Newton, Satchmo. You don't see these guys, if they're not using headsets, you never see Celine Dion singing with the microphone stuck on her chin. These microphones aren't designed to be, if, if they were, if, if, if Electra Voice had meant for you to call with the microphone on your chin, they'd put a chin thing here. You'd have a little place here to rest it on your chin. They're not designed that way. They're designed to be spoken into, not across. So that would be the first thing I, I would address. Uh, that to me seems to be a huge common problem. The other big problem I see with showmanship, uh, and it's, it, music is a super effective tool. That's our, one of our biggest tools. The problem is, is that we often overuse the music. I hate, sometimes I wish that, that, that uh, Dick Henschel and, and Jim Hilton, when he designed, when he designed the, the first microphone, would have never put this little wheel on here. Because we spend the entire evening doing this. Because we callers think, here, here's the logic, that most callers use is that if I'm speaking I cut the volume down if I'm not singing or speaking I cut the volume up that's our rationale most callers music creates enthusiasm that is what builds things up 
the, the louder the music, generally, the more enthusiasm you build. That's, that's how we, you get excited. When you get excited, your voice, a couple of things happen. You get louder and your voice goes higher. That's what we want to create with the music. Well, if you've got dancers, if, if they're doing this all night, they don't know whether they get excited or not because they're bouncing up and down. So you lose that tool. Most of us would be better off if we unplugged it and never used it until you get... The problem is, is we all think we know how to use it. And, and I would like to put up for your consideration that, that the vast majority of us are using the music either incorrectly or poorly. Uh, ask the dancers if they like to hear this all night. And I have seen callers, honest to goodness, I, 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 I've seen pros. We're so used to this that even if it's not hooked up, I just did a dance, there, were, there was like six of us calling, we had six mics plugged in, doing that cluster thing that, that callers seem to like, that I hate, that sounds so bad. We didn't have the music, we didn't have the, we couldn't, since we were on a board, we're on a mix board, we didn't have the, still, they're doing this, and it's not even plugged in. I've watched callers talk, make announcements, and move the volume control. Um, it, it's a great tool if you know how to use it. Cordless microphones are a great tool if you know how to use it. If you don't know how to use it, my advice would be not to use it so much. Uh, so I see a lot of callers making that mistake. Um, I also see callers try to sell themselves poorly. I think maybe that's probably what I think would be the biggest mistake I see callers do. I see callers that are not very, very talented choreographically try to call like the last caller that came into town who might have been Jerry Story who can get people through things. That, and, and so then, then the next week you're trying to do these same things and you wonder why it don't work. Um, be careful when you emulate someone. You know, be, be sure that you can do this stuff. I see too many guys try to do too many things that they're not prepared to do. The whole key is preparation. If you want to get creative choreographically, learn to move your checkers. Um, I was in a session in a panel, maybe it was yesterday. It seems like I've been here six weeks. But, but I, believe, I believe that any caller worth his salt should be able to move checkers. Now, if you have, and we have some great, great computer software right now. It's, it's the best that it's ever been, just like our music. And it's a great tool, but I can guarantee you that the authors of the program and most of the people that use that software extensively still move checkers. You've got to be able to move checkers if you're going to be an effective choreographer. If you want to improve your choreography, learn to move checkers. If you want to improve your skills musically, listen to the music. We put record, we put, we put stuff on and never listen to it. You can't sell something if you don't hear it. Uh, you'll find that most records are, 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 made, are arranged the same way, seven times through, 64 beats, seven times through. The instrumentation is the same on one, four, and seven, two, and five, and three, and six. I can guarantee you that the instrumentation on most tunes, Wade Driver initiated that 30 years ago when he first started rhythm back in 1975 or six somewhere. He started doing music different than it had ever been done before. Since that time, Everybody now has started, kind of started doing things the way Wade did it. So now, if you listen to your music, figures one, the opener, the middle break, and the closer, the instrumentation will be the same. Figures two and five, the instrumentation will be the same, and figures three and six, the instrumentation will be the same. If you know that, then that will allow you to sell music. You know, you know when this great saxophone is coming in. You know that figure number five is, is the saxophone, which tells you, well, if figure number five is the saxophone, then figure number two is as well. Uh, so know your music. Know your, know your craft. Know how to use these amplifiers. You want, you want to be a good showman, know how, to, know how to use this speed control. It's a great tool to know how to use, as well as this little volume control. Uh, know how to use this treble and bass. And for goodness sake, know how to use that volume. We tend to think that louder is better. And uh, most of the times it's not. It's kind of like setting up speakers in a hall. Often, I just did one the other week, and, and, and the hall was not much bigger than this, and we had two full yak stacks in there. 
You know, and, and I came in, the guy's got a 500, it's set on tandem. I've got two yaks and 12 squares. You know, it's six squares per yak. You know, overkill. You know, you don't, you don't need, more is not always better. If I could impart anything upon you today, more is not always better. More choreography is not always better. More loud is not always better. More fast is not always better. Okay? Hope I addressed enough. I'm rambling to make up time here since you guys aren't asking questions. Yes, sir, you are? Arnold Gladson from Cedar Park. A uh, question I have for you is if you, if you try something as showmanship and it doesn't work and you recognize that, what kind of things do you do to recover for the rest of the night? Do you just, do you just walk away from it and say, well, I'm not going to try anything, or do you try to get back the crowd? or What kind of things do you do when you get into that situation? Today I would have done something like take a note to Tony that didn't work. Really? No, if you do something and it doesn't work, you can't go back and undo it. You just got to oops and, and, and carry on. And, and be honest with them. Well, I, I, I really thought I could sing like Satchel. Well, I guess I can't. We'll work on it or, or whatever. You have to be honest with the dancers. If you try to sell them showmanship, you try to fool them, which is what you're doing. Hey, this is going to be good, and it isn't. Tell them. I blew it. I'm sorry. Let's move on. If you're honest with the people, I think they'll like you, and they'll believe you, and they'll come back for some more. You have to be honest, totally. He's absolutely correct. Any more? Yes, sir. Hold on. Maybe I feel more like Jerry Springer. <laughs> uh, Jim Jeffries over in Park, Kansas. One of the things that I see callers do, and, and I admit that I've done it, but I have been, I try not to ever do it, and that is pick up a handful of records and thumb through them while you've got dancers squared up on the floor trying to find something to call. Uh, be prepared, have your program outlined so that you know what you're going to do. Absolutely. Absolute dancers want to spend time watching you look for records. Any others? Well, we'll let you go a few minutes early. Thanks for coming. Once again, nice hand for Skip and Lona. And uh, they'll both be around if you guys want to talk to them a little bit after or something. Got a refreshment break coming up at 3. Thank you for coming, guys.